Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another interview series. My name is Meher from St. John's, Newfoundland and Labrador. And today I have the privilege to interview Barb Bruno from Chicago. Hi, Barb. How are you doing? I'm fine. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you for being here. My so pleasure. Barb, uh, Barb is an internationally recognized staffing and recruiting trainer and keynote speaker. And I have taken some of her courses on LinkedIn. So please go check on LinkedIn some of her courses. I really encourage everyone to, to take that. And over 25 years of experience, Barb's primary focus has been helping clients improve their sales and profits. Her ideas are comprehensive, logical, easy to implement, and help guarantee that participants realize a strong return on their investment of time and money. So Barb, a lot of experience you've done, you've been keynote speaker, a lot of workshops, a lot of things. And we all know that these days, personal brand is something very important, mm -hmm. especially for job seekers, you know, your personal brand, your online presence is important because that's the first thing recruiters will go on LinkedIn to check their profile, what mm -hmm. they have done. So in that sense, what tips you have for job seekers, new immigrants, international students that they can use LinkedIn as their personal brand and how can they start? Well, first of all, your LinkedIn profile should not be your resume. I think that's the biggest mistake people make. Mm -hmm. they, they take their resume or CV and they just load it up on LinkedIn and that's not effective. Oh. And so your LinkedIn profile should be a mini sales letter. It should tell people why you're different. Your brand is actually your track record of success. Mm -hmm. And so whether you're a student, just a recent grad, whether you've got years of experience, your LinkedIn profile should highlight why you're better, different, you know, why you're more effective than someone else that maybe has had the same job or the same path as you had. So, you know, I don't, I don't believe in downloading a resume at all on LinkedIn. Even your title, you know, should be something unique. You know, you don't want it to be, you know, just a job title. You know, it, it should be something that gets attention. And what recruiters do when they go on LinkedIn and they're doing searches, that they're, they're very, they'll look at your title and they'll look at the little blurb that you do after your name. Then yeah. they go right to recommendations. Mm -hmm. And so you have to be sure that you really load your LinkedIn profile with recommendations and you've got to coach your recommendations because your recommendations are part of your brand. These are people that know you. But, you know, sometimes people hurt you by their recommendations. Yeah. They're not recommending you for the skill sets that you want to market in the job market. Mm -hmm. So you have to, you know, you have to go out there and, because the, the problem with the recommendations is the most recent one is always first. Yeah. You can't, you can't change the order. And yeah. so say that I'm in a career now and I want to do something totally different. I have to go out and I have to tell my network, this is the job I'm going after. This is a career I'm pursuing can you recommend me for this? Can you recommend me for my analytical skills? Can mm -hmm. you recommend me for my ability to close deals? You know, and so your recommendations have to be recommending you for skill sets that you want to take to the market and market. And your brand is not that you have 10 years of experience, that you have a degree. Your brand is your track record of success. What have you done different, better, faster than somebody else that has the same experience as you. And you have to show what you've done and the impact that it's had. Because if you've high achieved for someone else, if you've accomplished something, a future yeah. employer is going to say, gee, you're going to do that for me too. Yeah. You know, so you want to put down what you've done and the impact. That's your brand. Your brand is your track record. Mm -hmm. No one has your track record. They could have the same education. They could have the same experience. You have your own track record and that's your brand. And you got to get comfortable with your 30 second pitch, the things you're gonna say when you go out there. And, and again, when you're presenting yourself, a job search is a sales process. Yes, and you're selling so yourself. You're selling yourself. And unless you're a salesperson, it's not comfortable because yeah. you know, you're not used to, because too many people think you're bragging. Well, you know, you've got you've to outdo the competition. You know, you've got to put on the table what you have to offer. Mm. So it really is more of a, a, more of a, um, more of a an audition for a mm -hmm. part than it is fact finding. So, you know, think of all the things you've done and then let companies know how you can benefit them. And yeah. that's how you get hired. That's how you get noticed. So when you say show the track or your ex ex accomplishments, mm -hmm. so how can you show like in the experience part or creating content about, so how can they show? 
a couple of ways. You can do it because I don't want it to be a resume. So when you're giving yeah. your summary of yourself, you're showing your accomplishments right then and there. Okay. Hopefully your recommendations are showing your accomplishments, you know, plus you've got to position yourself on LinkedIn as an expert, even if you've got light experience, yeah. you've got to join groups mm -hmm. that other people in your profession would join, or what would the hiring, what, what, what groups do the hiring authorities join? Yeah. And what you want to do is you want to join groups on LinkedIn, and then once a week, post an article showing your knowledge. Yeah. And when you post in, don't do an, don't do an article, do a post, yeah. find a picture do a short post and then LinkedIn makes it very easy for you to write a post and then you just share it with all your groups. You can share yes. it on Twitter and then you can share it with all your groups. It yes. takes maybe 15 minutes to do, do mm -hmm. it once a week. And that's recruiters go to groups to recruit. They do. Yes. Um, hiring authorities go to groups to hire. And so by you posting an article, you know, it helps position your, you're showing people your knowledge, yeah. you know, and you're showing them what you know, and people will come in and start yeah. you know, tracking you down. You want recruiters to track you down. Yeah. So in terms of the experience, but I just want to make it very clear to everyone. Sure. So you have your resume, let's say you've been HR assistant for three jobs. Do you put the HR assistant and the name of the company and nothing in the bulletin point or what what what's what's the other thing you're, you're say that i would put the company name and i would put hr assistant and then i i would not put a description of my job i'd put two or three bullets okay. giving what i did and the impact on the company okay. then i go to the next job hr assistant and as an hr assistant what you're doing is you're saving time you're not generating money but you're saving time mm -hmm. and and how did what you do how did that help engage the people did you help with sourcing did you help identify the best talent for the company mm -hmm. You know, what part did you play in orientation, which helped retain the talent you hired? Yes. Think of what you did that you're known for. When you left that company, what did they say about you? What are the great things they said mm -hmm. about you? What mark did you leave? That's what your LinkedIn profile has to show. But in the resume, it can be more detailed. Yes. Okay. Yes. And how far people should go? 10 years? 10 years. 10 years. And, and, it, and, it, and you have to understand something. What's killing most people is they have two and three page resumes. Yes. Now, if you've got an academic resume or certain ones have to be longer, the best resume you could possibly do is one page. Mm -hmm. And you have to realize that those automatic systems that read resumes, most job boards, most website postings go to an automated parser. Mm -hmm. All they read is the top one third of the first page. That's it. That's it. So they scan. And sometimes people put their name and their contact information so large that they don't have any keywords. So think of the jobs you want, have your name and contact information small. And then the next thing that should be there are your career summary and mm -hmm. then your core competencies. Okay. So core competencies are your soft skills, like mm -hmm. organizational ability, team player, problem yeah. solver. But your career summary, you look at the job you want and you look at the words they use when they're describing the job. Yeah. And any of those words that you can use in your career summary mm -hmm. will make the system screen you in rather than screen out. Most yeah. people feel like they fall into a black, dark hole when they submit yeah. a resume online. Yeah. Um, job boards are where you have the highest level of competition and the lowest rate of return on your time. Yeah. You know, so I don't suggest I don't suggest that anybody spend more than 10 percent of their time on job boards. Mm -hmm. But if you do, if you're submitting resumes online, just fold your, fold your resume or CV in thirds, okay? And yeah. realize that an automated parser is going to parse this much. That's it. Just the top third. Mm -hmm. And so there have to be keywords yeah. there that's going to make the system screen you in. And do you recommend job seekers to reach out to the recruiters or hiring manager via LinkedIn saying that, um, hi, Sam, I apply to this role in your company. I can bring to this table. Uh, I mean, I can bring to this, uh, this accomplishment to the company. I look forward to hear from you. Do you recommend that? Or is there any templates no. or what no. do you? No. They're being ignored. They're being ignored. You have to understand something. I do training for LinkedIn. So I have a lot of their big data. Yes. Over 80% of emails are not open. They're mm -hmm. just not open. It depends on your subject line. In mail, is not people don't want to connect with people they don't know and people are tired of being sold on linkedin yeah. and so you've got thousands of job seekers from all over the world that are contacting hiring authorities saying i submitted a resume i did this it's not working the way the way to get the attention of a hiring manager yeah. is you know sometimes they say submit your resume online and you have to do what yeah. they tell you to do but yeah. then you have to identify the person who would be your boss's boss 
and everybody, this information is online. It's yeah. easy to track people down. Figure out who would be your boss's boss and then send them your resume by mail, by mail. Mm -hmm. And you put a cover letter on there and your cover letter says, you know, I'm confident I can do the job. I'm interested if you're answering a specific job. And yeah. then you give your accomplishments in your cover letter, tell them why you're confident mm -hmm. and then say, I will be contacting you within the next week. And what you do is you handwrite the envelope and you don't put a company name on the left-hand side, never a company envelope. And on the bottom left-hand corner of the envelope, you put personal and confidential. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then when you send that to a specific person, when it says personal and confidential, no one will open that. An HR assistant won't open it. A secretary won't open it. It'll go right on that person's desk. Yeah. And, and they're going to open it. And, and now they see I'm confident. I'm, you know, and indirectly marketing yourself, even if a company doesn't advertise, even if you don't know that they have a job, think of the companies that you want to work for. Yes. Who do you want to work for? Yeah. And what you do is you target them. You set up Google alerts. So yeah. you read everything about them, you know, learn everything about them, get the name of the person who would be your boss's boss and indirectly market yourself to the companies where you want to work. Yeah. Because right now that is working. Networking, networking, over 85% of the people finding jobs right now are yeah. finding it through networking. Yeah. So you want to reach out to your personal network, your professional network, but mm -hmm. then you want to network yourself by mail right into the companies you want to work because no one does this. Yeah. And all of a sudden this person, you know, and almost everybody, if it's a bigger department, they have a weak link. They might not have an opening, but they've got someone working for them that they'd love to replace. And all of a sudden they get this cover letter from you saying, I'd love to work for your company for the mm -hmm. following reasons. These are my accomplishments. Um, I'll be calling you to have a discussion. And then when you call in and they say, what's the reason for the call? I had mailed them information. They're expecting my call. Indirectly marketing yourself yeah. is the second best way to find a job only behind somebody opening a door for you. The yeah. best way for you to find a job is to work your personal network, to work mm -hmm. your professional network, everybody that you know, um, you've got a give and take in your network, but yeah. you know somebody that can make an introduction. You know somebody who can open a door. You're just not thinking of them. Yeah. That's how I got my first job. I knew someone who knew someone. Me too. And they just made the introduction. The rest was on me. Absolutely. And, and when somebody introduces you, you don't even need all the credentials of the job because this person likes you. They trust you because they knew the person that recommended you. They'll teach you what you don't know, yeah. especially recent grads. You know, I had a granddaughter that got out of college and didn't want any help. And uh, I kept saying, I can help you find a job. I'll do it on my own. And so she was a bartender for 10 months and she finally came to me. And so I, I redid her LinkedIn profile because it was terrible. I redid her resume. I took down her Facebook page. I said, take it down because inappropriate picture, too much drinking in college, too much partying. She was on Facebook during working hours. I said, take your Facebook page down. And within five weeks, she had four job offers. Wow. So, yeah. you know, don't be afraid to use the people, you know, to help you find a job. Don't be too proud um, because people can open doors. And that's how most people are finding their jobs right now. Yeah. Those are great tips, Barb. Thank you for that. So for the audience watching and listening for the first time, I'm going to ask for a couple of questions and I'm going to post them on a daily basis. So you can be like a journey with us. You can okay. like, share any of the videos. So tune in tomorrow for another question with Barb.